Well, when a judge, uh, after a judge reach, reaches the age of 65, if they've been on the bench for 15 years, they can take senior status and take a reduced load. Okay. They uh, don't have a reduced salary because uh, we're appointed for life and uh, the salary that we have is, is set. Uh, but uh, they're basically volunteer judges because they're not making any more money uh, mm -hmm. than they otherwise would if they'd retired. But they're helping the court and uh, we really have a wonderful group of, uh, of senior judges on our court. With great knowledge and experience it's, that certainly can help. It really is wonderful, yes. Now, it being a pri primarily a trial court, uh, does the federal district court hear any appeals? Um, yes, we do. Uh, we hear appeals uh, from the, um, uh, the bankruptcy courts and we also hear appeals uh, from uh, magistrate judges' decisions. Can, and can you describe um, the bankruptcy judges and the magistrates? There is a difference, correct? Yes, there is. And can you exp explain what that is? Well, the bankruptcy judges uh, are uh, uh, part of the bankruptcy court, which is established uh, by the Constitution uh, to um, uh, deal with cases where people can't fully pay their debts and to adjudicate those cases and assist those, uh, those people in getting their cases resolved. Uh, and then the magistrate judges are, are judges that are appointed by the district judges to assist uh, the district judges in connection with uh, the various cases that the district judges are assigned. Magistrate judges uh, also can uh, handle uh, uh, the same cases the district judges uh, handle uh, in, on the civil side uh, if uh, the parties consent to the magistrate judge's jurisdiction. How does one become, uh, say, a magistrate judge? Well, the process, uh, there, there has to be a, uh, we're, we're in the process right now of, uh, of making those decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, a, um, a statutory uh, committee has to be appointed by the chief judge. And uh, uh, at least two members of that committee uh, have to uh, be non-lawyers. That committee then uh, reviews the uh, people who apply for the position of magistrate judge and makes recommendations to the, uh, the district court judges then it's a majority vote of the district court judges as to who should be the next magistrate judge. And so we have three vacancies in the magistrate judge positions now, and, and we're going to be making a decision uh, by the end of this month as to who will be the next three magistrate judges on our court. And is there a term for the magistrate judges? Yes, the magistrate judges' uh, uh, term is eight years, and they could be renewed oh, by okay. a majority vote of the uh, district judges. And then the bankruptcy judges, is it the same procedure or is it a different procedure? The bankruptcy judges, their term is 14 years and they are selected by the judges of the Court of Appeals, the, the, in our uh, court, the judges of the Seventh Circuit. Okay. And um, in your position as chief judge, you've, you've made some changes um, over at the federal court. Can you uh, explain to us maybe some of the new programs that you um, have implemented since you've taken over as chief judge? Well, our, um, uh, the previous chief judges had uh, some wonderful programs that uh, we've continued. Uh, uh, one of the programs is the uh, pro bono awards ceremony each year that uh, uh, Chief, then Chief Judge Marv Aspen established uh, 10 years ago. Uh, but um, uh, with regard to, uh, to, to new programs, uh, uh, we, we have tried to tighten up security at the courthouse, which is something that's uh, essential, uh, but yet still uh, allow people uh, the proper access to the courts. Uh, we also um, uh, have uh, developed what's called a settlement assistance program, and that's for pro se individuals, people who don't have lawyers, uh, to see if uh, we, we appoint a lawyer for the purpose of seeing if the, that lawyer can assist them in settling the case. If that's not, uh, uh, if it doesn't happen, then uh, uh, the person has to continue to prosecute their own case uh, uh, without a lawyer. Have you seen an increase in the number of pro se litigants? Because on the state side, we have seen the increase in the number of uh, people uh, who just simply cannot afford a lawyer um, and have are proceeding on their own. Yes, and as a matter of fact, another program that uh, was uh, we, that we have developed it was a, the suggestion of, uh, of of Judge Bill Hibbler, who came from the state court system before when he became mm -hmm. a federal judge, uh, is the self help desk. It's a a program that. Uh, um, we have uh, appointed lawyers 
who uh, talk to the pro se's, uh, talk to the individuals who aren't otherwise represented about their cases, and assist them in pro uh, providing some advice as to how they should proceed. Uh, that has worked uh, very well. In fact, uh, other uh, district courts from across the country have come to visit our court to uh, examine and uh, perhaps duplicate the uh, self-help desk that we, uh, that we have. So the lawyers that participate in that program, are they doing that voluntarily? Is this in addition to their regular practice? It's in addition to their regular practice and they're actually compensated uh, through funds from the Chicago uh, Bar Foundation. Uh, and uh, it really has worked out very well for the court. Well, absolutely, to help uh, these litigants uh, file the proper papers and right. make sure that things are, because many times, obviously, if you're not trained legally, you wouldn't understand the appropriate proceeding, proceedings. Um, I think that's wonderful, but there are other things, too, I believe that, um, uh, Chief Judge, that you have focused on um, educating uh, high school kids and oh, college kids. We, yeah, we have uh, developed those uh, educational programs mm -hmm. uh, as well. Uh, our court uh, really has uh, the opportunity to uh, get the message out and so uh, almost on a weekly basis, uh, maybe uh, sometimes more than uh, once a week, we have uh, high school students, junior high students visit our court uh, and uh, we have developed programs to uh, assist in that education. Uh, we have things up on our website, information up on our website, uh, and uh, provide educational opportunities for the uh, young people to come visit our court, talk to judges, and uh, find out what the court system is all about. Now, what kind of information is on the website? Because well, the young kids today, that's all they do is they're on the <laughs> Internet, correct? <laughs> it, it, it's educational materials uh, that uh, a committee of, uh, of teachers put together uh, that uh, I had appointed uh, a year or so ago and uh, they, they've done a wonderful job of uh, putting together this, uh, this information. So have you seen an increase maybe in the, I guess, uh, the young kids getting interested in law or interested in uh, the judicial uh, arena, so to speak? Yes, we have, uh, and I'm, I'm proud of that because, uh, frankly, uh, I believe it's important that uh, young people understand that the, the, the courts aren't, uh, aren't just uh, uh, there to uh, bring actions against them if they do something wrong. Courts are actually there to uh, uh, provide uh, society uh, uh, the means by which uh, disputes, uh, civil disputes can be resolved as well as uh, dealing with uh, matters of the criminal law. And maybe uh, to help uh, ease some fear because most people get uh, a little afraid when they have to go to court, even as a juror. I've seen it certainly in trying cases, uh, the look on the veneer's face sometimes uh, when you're in the courtroom. And I think it helps if people get a little um, taste of what it's like. Absolutely. Um, and when the young people come in, when uh, I'm the judge that's going to be speaking with them, uh, you can just see uh, when I come down from the bench, take the robe off, and I'm a, a real person mm -hmm. who talks about whatever they want to talk about, about the courts, and to answer their questions in, a, in the way that we do, uh, you can really see them uh, start to have a better understanding of uh, this is really a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I understand that uh, there was also a pilot program for jurors to access the website? Yes, uh, we are uh, the first court in the country to have uh, uh, e-juror, uh, where we provide uh, information uh, electronically, because a lot of people uh, in our, our district uh, have uh, computers, of course, and we provide information electronically and they can respond to their jury summonses electronically. Oh, okay. uh, it's, uh, it, it, it works out very well. After all, uh, our district, as I said, goes all the way out to the, as far as the Mississippi River, and so uh, jurors are brought in uh, from, at least from the Eastern Division, as far away as LaSalle County, and that's quite a hike, and so uh, uh, we want to have instant communication with those folks, and the e-juror program has worked well. And uh, you are also the co-chair of the Seventh Circuit Bar Association's American <coughs> Jury Project Commission? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? The, uh, the American Jury Project uh, was started by the ABA uh, uh, back in uh, 2005 to try to enhance jurors' understanding. Uh, we here in the Seventh Circuit, uh, my co-chair uh, Jim Filio and uh, uh, Judge uh, Diane Sykes from the Seventh Circuit, those are the co-chairs, uh, along with a number of uh, hardworking uh, lawyers, uh, put together a, a program where we uh, tried new uh, innovative techniques to enhance jury understanding. 